show from uh, the Musings is by Marco channel currently. Who knows what the hell it'll end up as. And uh, then uh, Brian here. Um, from the Dead Man Dreams channel, of course. I'll be uploading it on this channel, of course. Yeah. And, uh, I might upload it on my channel too, but I don't know. Do it. We'll see. Uh, we'll figure it out. But a much improved microphone this time. And we are talking about the Tesla robot, humanoid robot. Right, yeah. First of all, uh, how you doing? How you been? Since uh, good, we caught good. up last how time. How about you? I put out my new video. Things have been going well. I got the new Seneca one coming out soon. And uh, one person I found on Twitter, uh, she was, uh, or he or she, I don't even know who it is, but the person was suicidal, and I was trying to show people that video who was suicidal. And uh, All right, let's hope they didn't so, kill themselves after they saw the video. That no, would be a bad no, review. The beginning, the beginning is more about <laughs> sympathy and realizing, you know, uh, I understand the the suffering and then the three-fourths of the video is all about how to overcome the suffering all right so let's know what i've been up to uh yeah. i don't know random things i got new bed sheets if we're gonna follow up on the uh the home care stuff because last time i all talked right, about it, the shower yeah, stuff yeah, they're really good actually oh my god they're soft as hell it doesn't help with the chronic back pain but it does feel much better <laughs> They're really fucking right. soft. I got them from Costco. They were like half off, too. It was, nice. it was a good deal. You know, some people go for the high thread count stuff, but that's a mistake. You really don't want to go above 400 thread count because it gets so dense that um, the air can't flow through it. So it gets hot. And especially where I am, I tend to get uh, hot with like the really dense stuff. It feels softer and silky, but... It sucks because it gets too hot. It might as well be some shitty women. microfiber. Are you the women to this uh, podcast right now? <laughs> no, that's just I, I'm into that. I'm in. That's one of the things right, I'm right. into. I got my uh, feminine sides. I got my masculine sides, like everyone. Uh, but I think even my masculine sides, like you know, guys like comforts and stuff too. So, you know. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the Tesla, the the robot, and how it was so important for uh, Elon Musk to take the company in this direction towards uh, fully automated driving cars and this uh, new humanoid robot called Optimus. Yeah. Robot or Optimus. All right, jump on in. Or, you know what, I'll ask you that first question. Let's jump into it because we're trying to make this one shorter. Uh, I have learned that the core purpose of these humanoid robots are to eliminate boring and repetitive tasks. How much cheaper will they be than human labor? Also, what specifics has he revealed as far as what tasks they can do? And a little side note, like Michio Kaku was talking about how dangerous it is to, for people to uh, fix the Fukushima uh, nuclear meltdown disaster because All robots right. were, so, were so stupid back then, they couldn't even turn a screwdriver into a screw. So how, how much better are these robots going to be? Okay. All right. I'll try to remember all that. That's like four questions, but okay. Uh, the first thing was um, the cost. Uh, how much are they going to cost? Could you follow up with yeah, the Michio Kaku much, thing? What was cheaper? the first part? Yeah, no, but the, how much cheaper will they be than human labor? Basically? Okay, than human labor. Yeah, yeah. And what will they be able to do? Yeah, exactly. I know okay. The boring, repetitive tasks. I right. Know, any given specifics. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, this is still really early days for that. Um, they don't have a prototype yet. Um, they said maybe a prototype this year, but you have to uh, discount for Elon time, meaning that everything's later than he says it is because he's super ambitious and optimistic about everything. So when he says a year, I add at least 50% to that, if not 100%. So it's at, at a six months or another year. Maybe they get a prototype. But this is a huge new thing that he's into um all right, let, let me all right, let me not go into the monologue let me not, okay let me try to actually answer this so uh how much will it cost um that is hard to say right now um obviously when you scale things up they're going to get cheaper so uh but tesla has the manufacturing um ability to make it in really large quantities they got the key components are the batteries um, they're going to be making their own, and everyone's making more batteries now. The raw materials is no problem. There's nothing else too exotic in there. And then um, uh, robotics is basically just like small ele electric motors for the different um, joints that have to move and stuff. And, um, uh, and that's it. And, uh, and oh, and the brain part of it. 
the microchip, the, the brain part of it. And that's kind of where FSD ties in. And that's, that's really the hard part for robotics, not that the other stuff is easy, but you can make a robot now that is, can move pretty well and can maybe have a charge for a long enough time to operate, What's but dynamic? they're dumb. They don't, they're not able to do the things that people could do. But this is where artificial intelligence comes in, and this is what Tesla is kind of um, in the lead on and working on. This is the new thing they want to focus on. Um, they're kind of developing. Elon thinks that the artificial intelligence they're using to develop uh, the car driving itself, the FSD, is, um, is, will, is a good stepping stone into a more general artificial intelligence, not like true general uh, artificial intelligence is required to make the Tesla bot work. But it's basically, yeah. if you've got the neural nets, which is like a software version of how our brain works, where it's kind of like, box. yeah, it's like, it's kind of like you, you tune it, but it kind of spits things out. And it's kind of, uh, uh, you don't control every part of it. Like software, usual software, you have to write every single line of code. A neural net, you don't do that. It kind of does things for you and you kind of set parameters. That's a whole uh, other thing. Uh, but um, So they're making a bunch of improvement on that. And they think that once the car, and they're getting confident, they seem really confident now. I mean, he's been saying this forever, but now they seem more confident than they've ever been. And you can look at the progress they're making, and I know they're gonna. It's obvious they're gonna make a lot of progress. You can uh, ask me about that afterwards if you want. Yeah. But um, so okay, so once so once the car gets to the point where it can drive itself, then the neural net, the artificial intelligence that allows the car to do that, is gonna be uh, much more advanced than it is now, and it's not gonna be a big leap to just kind of take that and put it yeah. into a robot form that it's able yeah, to walk, it's able to detect objects around it, like avoid them, move through 3D space. A big part of the uh, car system is labeling everything. So you can label, so you know what they are, so you know what they're gonna do. Like right now the car can already, uh, it starts, it's starting to model like what, like a person versus a car. And, you know, it, it thinks yeah. about what a person could do differently and what a car can do. Like a person can only yeah. move so cross fast, the cross yeah. the street, might cross unexpectedly. Cross um, in front of a vehicle and then pop out on the other side of the vehicle. I remember Elon talking about that. Yeah. You don't expect certain objects to pass through to the other side. But when you see a humanoid figure, you assume that it's going to pop out to the other side. Yeah. Whether it's going to the street or going to the uh, driver's uh, door to open that up. And, yeah. Know, and object permanence, which is like peekaboo for kids, like when they're like before a certain age, they like think it's magic. It's like, oh, I'm here. I'm not here <laughs> because they don't have object permanence yet, which is what the yeah. early neural net doesn't have. Like when they don't see it on the sensor, then it's like doesn't exist. So they have to have yeah. built in the code and the memory. So it like remembers things when they go behind something else. So it's not like this is I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's like, no, if we see a guy walk behind a car, then he's walking towards the road. You have to expect that he might jump onto the road next because he's about to pop out he's out of your field of view so yeah there's all kinds there was an accident remember somebody in arizona was in the dark on a bicycle and somebody was test driving one of the uh yeah what was it the early tesla or wasn't was a tesla it wasn't a tesla oh, it was tesla. uh no yeah. it was one of the other video, companies a video like showed the woman who was in the car monitoring it and like you got all shocked when they hit the biker uh the not a it's just a regular bicycle not a motorcycle yeah yeah that, that was scary footage yeah it was uh, but i saw that footage and most people driving would have killed the person anyways like if you saw did you watch the footage because that person no, i i, 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 I watched it reaction. yeah yeah i, I watched it and basically there's no street lights around there it's pitch black the person walking across the street had no lights uh i think it was, was only walking I thought yeah it was a bicycle she was walking the bicycle. She was standing oh, next wow. to the bicycle and walking it, and it was all black. She was black. It was dark clothes, and oh. uh, and you know, and it's like, and this is a fast car. There's a lot. There's a lot of fast streets. I mean, it's a fast street. There's a lot of fast streets in Arizona. So it's like 40, 50 miles an hour. Or like all the streets. Everyone goes 10. That one wasn't, but yeah, I think most people would have hit that. 
but uh, it wasn't a Tesla. And Tesla is even the, um, they have their full self-driving beta, which I'm talking about why they're making progress, is they have 60,000 people doing this right now, which I found on the earning call. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought it was, wow. last we heard it was like 5,000. Now they got 60,000 people running this thing where the car's driving itself? Yeah, they, that's why they don't have new models coming out. Right. How much money that is. <laughs> They're working on it, but the, the margins are going to be good once they solve it. Like that's the good software margins well, are fucking juicy. Margins, so when do you think that after they develop this humanoid robot and after the development and manufacturing costs, when will it actually become profitable? But also they'll be able to use it for uh, developing future uh, Tesla technology, SpaceX technology, and Boring Company or any other uh, or Neuralink. They'll be able to use these humanoid robots for any of those. It's, yeah, Elon only time, makes things for Mars. Out. He makes everything for Mars. It's just a, we're, we're a test, we're a playground. Earth is a playground to get things to work for Mars. So, um, yeah, how long they'd be profitable? Uh, I mean, it's definitely going to be a big investment for. Uh, it's a lot of software type stuff, and. Um, I think that's the hardest part of it. I think with where they are, with the they, because they're so vertically integrated at Tesla that they, like other car manufacturers, just source things out. So it'd be hard for them. But Tesla, because they are fully electric vehicle, they've never messed around with gas engines, and they do everything in house. I don't think it's going to be very hard for them to make like a state of the art robot body that is the best compared to what everyone else, and do it in a way that's not going to break the bank. Sure, be the best where they're they're going to be uh you know it's just it's electric motors it's battery and uh Austin dynamics though i mean they may be good on the mechanical side but i think the artificial intelligence side maybe tesla is way ahead of them already right already. right yeah, yeah. Uh, Boston dynamics where you see there's dog like robots where they kick them and they like abuse these things and try to knock them over <laughs> and then it, within like a split second these things they correct their uh their uh, ability to uh, remain upright. I'm, I'm going to insert that video. I'm going to insert uh, <laughs> a, a bunch of like, wild, cool videos uh, throughout this uh, whole podcast because it's going to be pretty wild. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know this is this has got the Tesla community is really excited about this Tesla bot. I know uh, Wall Street hates it and the stock is down, but uh, everyone who really likes Tesla is like can't stop talking about this freaking Tesla bot because it's so unexpected that it was going to become a priority like elon yeah. said on this earnings call it's like yeah they expected them they're like uh so like okay we get it that with the factories coming online you're going to have enough cars to grow 50 percent for this year and for next year but what about like 2024 and 2025 like i don't think you're going to be able to grow 50 percent with just the suv and the sedan that are costing like fifty thousand dollars like plus right now like uh, yeah. you know and uh they're challenging him on that and he's basically saying well one uh fsd when the cars are going to drive themselves it's going to be the single biggest asset increase in value of any single asset in history so drivers no, no longer need to drivers. <laughs> yeah and he's like so with because of how valuable fsd is going to be he said we're we're not going to have to worry we're going to be able to sell those all day at you know yeah. that price and more and uh, okay um i like you have to discount that a little bit because like he has been saying this a lot but for reasons i kind of with the 60k like test drivers and the progress they're making now they're way further ahead than they have been for a long time it's impossible to see that they're not going to make a ton of progress on full self-driving this year they're going to be way further along than they are right oh, now yeah. and already they got people who are going you're going like 30 minute drives they're not doing anything in uh, certain areas like super right. downtown yeah so suburbs are actually no problem for these cars already i've seen a lot of videos where they're like they're stopping at stoplights at stop signs they're letting cars go they're creeping forward they're making right turns they're making left turns they're slowing down they're they're changing lanes like they could do all that stuff when it's not it's too crazy right now so. Yeah, they're already saving lives. They'll save more. I was going to look up the Boston Dynamics uh, market cap since you uh, right. mentioned that. Uh, uh, right. uh, but they got bought out. Quarter, yeah, so yeah. That, uh, question three, I could jump into it right after that. Cause okay. It's a good one. It comes into the safety aspect of this. So. Uh, I don't think uh, they probably won't say the market cap because I guess they got bought out by Google. 
Uh, so I guess it's just the market cap of Google at this point. But like I was going to say that they're not like uh, resource wise. Boston Dynamics didn't have a ton of money. Like they probably were only like if even a billion, probably under a billion dollars like of money. The, the company I had to work with where Tesla's near a trillion market cap. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the amount of resources SpaceX is like nothing compared to Tesla's value. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, well, it's totally private. And I think they uh, raised funding. They keep raising funding okay. at different rounds. It was like 90 billion, I think, last time. So yeah, it's that, not peanuts. But Asia. remember that guy from Asia, Dave and, Lee uh, or Kogwan Lee? Yeah. The guy who's going to go on the rich guy who started the, the big online store. Uh, and then he's going to be one of the uh, first people going into space uh, with uh, Tesla. Uh, I, I remember he was there during the reveal of uh, the massive rocket one. What, what's that one called? The, uh, the the largest, newest one. The Starship? Yeah, I think he was there for the reveal that, at that. And there was like this big presentation with Elon and him there. And he was the big investor. He threw a lot of money into it. Uh, okay. I forget if it was Alibaba or uh, or one, it was one of those Asian uh, stores uh, that's not popular here. You ready for that question though for the robot? Yeah, yeah. I messed All up right. my screen a little bit here, but I think I'm good. Uh, as far as safety goes, e uh, me, baby. Elon says <laughs> Elon <laughs> says uh, most yeah. people can either outrun these robots or outpower these robots. These new ones. Yeah, you don't want T one T one hundred models yeah. or what was the Schwarzenegger models like T one hundred one or something? He fought the T one thousand, so he was the model yeah. like lower than that. He was ever T one hundreds. Yeah, so uh, I saw this earlier. I forget the details. What is it capable of lifting and how fast are they? I think they said it was like five miles per hour. They could only move. Yeah. So the only people. And, and it could only lift like uh, it was like 120 something or 150 pounds. So most people could either outpower them or outrun right. them. But the only people that have to fear them, I guess, are small children and the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the all the young and healthy will survive, just like this pandemic. But uh, the elderly <laughs> will die. The pandemic of the robots is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can look up the specs online. I don't want to uh, mess up my screen, okay. but uh, they they have a they have a page where they show like yeah they could deadlift like a yeah. hundred pounds and only yeah something like that and they can only and it's like slower than you can run. So yeah, he said that specifically because he doesn't want to freak people out because you have yeah super Boy, strong robots. Crazy. It's like it just decides the if it has the strength to like punch a hole in you, yeah. you know, and, and <laughs> people wouldn't always, feel comfortable uh, around that. There's always people who resist change. Like there were so many people calling this For whole sure. computer digital era uh, a joke and a fluke that's gonna go away. Uh, my dad always, uh, I just mentioned this the other day on the email that we're in, but my dad said- You're gonna talk crap guy, about your dad? Oh, your no, dad's friend. He was, saying, he was saying there was a guy at United right before the digital age took off and there, he was like- Microsoft guy? Invest in Microsoft. Yeah, everybody invest in Microsoft. And he was like telling everybody, and then he just disappears one day, and he's probably filthy rich. Yeah, you know, uh, if he invested everything he had in the Microsoft uh, back so in the '90s, for sure he's loaded. Right if he didn't sell, Tesla it's true. And, and they're already 10x, yeah. But now the robot gives them another 10x or more built into it. At, exactly. There's this great 10x, though. 10x in the value of the stock price. From from when they origin from the initial price offering, you mean? No, from right now. 10x from where though what does that even mean like i don't get it 10x the price so it's at like oh, I got you. the I stock the price, price yeah the previous price okay. from right now from right, from right now right now to the future you're saying yeah yeah okay because it okay. matters because you buy it now you want it, how much higher can it go okay. it's another 10x built in easy at this point if not more um, and because that's the amount of value they're going to provide. There's a good video uh, by Stephen Mark Ryan. It's like a 30 second video. And um, I'll link it to you, actually. Um, he just shows like a little like a pie chart thing. And it shows like, uh, you know, it's one of those things that compare the size of different things because it's like, uh, um, eh, well, whatever. So it's like a graphic thing. And it shows like uh, energy is like a little circle. And then uh, it's like, uh, and transportation is like about the size of energy is these little circles. And then it shows this big and it zooms out. It zooms out and it shows inside this huge fucking circle is labor. 
that's so the Tesla bot replaces labor. Oh, and this okay. is the size, it's, it's each size represents the money value of it. And then, and then he zooms out, wait, and then he zooms out again. And it's like, you did, you thought I was done? No. And it zooms out more and more. And it's like triple the size that that, that huge difference just was. And that's all of labor. And uh, this is the path. This is gives them another exponential S curve 10x opportunity where it's a whole new market that no one else is in, that they could be first, that they could corner. And it's just going to be a huge value. Uh, you know, uh, if you got a couple Tesla bots, uh, yeah. I mean, you have no late. There's no labor shortage if you have Tesla bots and they're working. I mean, Crazy. yeah, and and I I, I trust him to do it well too. About that size chart, that's what they do with uh, on these universe videos where they show the size of Earth that, or the Moon first, and then Earth, and then it goes up to the Sun, and the next thing you know, it's like it's crazy how much bigger the Sun is than the Earth. I mean, and yeah. then it's crazy how our Sun is like super tiny compared yeah. to most suns. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it in the galaxy. Away, I mean, it's like, and then they go to, at the very end of everything. It's like the largest of the largest suns or ever like discovered and. Oh man, it's crazy. All right, let's jump on into uh, number four. Do you know what materials these new robo bots, these new Tesla bots, I mean, are going to be made of? Has they, have they announced that yet? No, no idea. I mean, uh, aluminum's lightweight, um, so yeah. that would make sense. Uh, they're, a lot of their cars they're making out of, um, they're doing their casting machines for their cars are using molten aluminum. Uh, so I would assume they do that. They make like a casting. It's a lot easier to make a casting that size versus a third of a car. So they have an easier time doing a smaller casting. Aluminum is a good lightweight. Uh, it's not too expensive. And uh, you need the most efficient batteries in there, obviously, because you want to save on weight. Um, you got your uh, standard microchip components. You got cameras. Cameras are pretty cheap and lightweight at this point. You can have... Uh, you know, you can have multiple cameras. Uh, I think it has a little screen for a face. Uh, we should definitely put up a picture uh, yeah. I mean, well, of I'm this. I'm definitely going to. I'm going to. I'm going to put the dancing video of <laughs> that they had, even though it wasn't a real bot. It was like a preview bot of uh, where Elon uh, had some guy dressed up like a robot come up on stage. Uh, if you want to do it right now. You put yeah, it. I'm going to do it right now and because uh, I yeah, should be able to do this, that. actually. And I was going to ask uh, about if they speak and listen like uh, smart assistants do, like uh, Google Assistant or Alexa or any of those. Uh, do you know if they're going to have that kind of – do you talk to them at all, you know? Uh, for sure they're going to um, – um, for sure it's going to have voice uh, capability. Um, the point is because you're going to be able to uh, – can you see my screen right now? I have to click watch stream in order. Should I click it? I guess. Yeah. All right. Now it's taking over the entire screen practically, and we're we're small. Okay. So. It's not. Um, it's probably not recording this on my end, but whatever. Um, yeah. It just hit images. Yeah. There so here is one of the things one, from. The it has the weight. Yeah. Early. Yeah, so this has some so stats here. Let's, let's read them. If up, I can uh, do this. No, not Google Lens. I just wanted to make it bigger. <laughs> it doesn't get bigger, I don't think. Uh, so yeah. can, I can read it, though. It's yeah, it's pretty clear. 5'8 is the height, so he's going to be one. Like, look at this stuff that he says. Friendly. <laughs> World built by humans for humans, <laughs> even though it's a robot. <laughs> Eliminate dangerous, repetitive. Oh, yeah, the dangerous Five, aspect eight. we haven't hit on yet. Like coal miners. Imagine the potential for coal miners. Well, hopefully, we don't have too much more coal. <laughs> well, get this. Yeah. Remember, we were Coal's in, terrible. in Arizona together where they had uh, real human organs encased in this uh, some kind of plastic that was see-through to preserve the organs. Oh, uh, yeah. And it showed, Plasticizing. Uh, it, showed the very, it showed different lungs. If any of you listening right now live in a city... Even if you never had a cigarette in your life, you have black spots on your lungs. And yeah. uh, and also, the only people in this world who have perfectly pink, great lungs are people who live in the middle of nowhere on islands. And uh, cigarette smokers are definitely have, like, way worse lungs. But there's nothing worse than coal miners' lungs, black lung. I mean, it was the most ridiculous, like, difference ever between a, just the average smoker's lungs and the black lung. Like, it was... It blew, it blew my mind, like... 
coal mining is so dangerous. If we can get the robots to replace the coal miners oh. or have like the most advanced like oxygen tanks for them. Yeah. Or in factories even, there can be a lot of uh, stuff that gets thrown up in the air when you're working with welding and uh, cutting things. You know, you get all these oh, yeah. kind of air like metals can get aerosolized and stuff. And asbestos like stuff. Yeah. And even just every day, air quality is big. So, uh, you know, we should all have more things i think to get us cleaner air um i think the air filters in cars should be better especially with before we got all electric cars you're driving down the road it's all just you know a tailpipe exhaust coming out of everyone as everyone else drives through it hey, it's not cool. a very great air to be driving through and breathing in all the time the um, and you're in gridlock yeah, so, uh, you know, if they put HEPA filters in cars, it'll make a big difference. Uh, some Teslas have that, which I appreciate. One of the things uh, that they care about their customers on, and they've done yeah. tests on that. And I have HEPA filters in the house. You don't want to use them for your AC system because they can stress it a bit more, and then, you know, you don't want to wear that out. But um, uh, here uh, you see, here's another one, technical yeah, detail page. Like what you were saying earlier. Yeah, it's got to be lightweight because it's got to save on the battery and, uh, you know, uh, the heavier it is. Whoop its ass if you have to. <laughs> right. Just kind of like shove it over and and jog I away. it's going to be as good as the Boston Dynamics is like keeping its balance. Like if you like definitely stick it in the face, like punch it like in the face or something just for fun. Like if you had a bad day at work, you come home, you punch it in the face. Is it gonna stay up or is it gonna fall down? And, like, yeah. Break something? Well, if you I pay wanna... for it, then you're probably gonna be less uh, happy about punching it if it's expensive. But uh, yeah, I think uh, it's gonna have pretty good balance. You know, it's it, yeah. You got I think bags who punch their wives though, and they pay for their wives like if, if they're the only worker. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> hands, oh man. Uh, yeah, uh, I think to answer your question, probably, yes. <laughs> All, right. All right, let me see. I got some more here. Uh, oh, I can, uh, see all three things on my screen. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I see all three. It shows that us as small, though, for now, but, uh. I'm learning new stuff all the time. I probably should have so, had it like that. Before I get to the hilarious question. Are we losing our humanity through this technology and through these robots? But is it worth it? That's a, a big question because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be like, I'm never having one of these, just like how there's a lot of Alexa holdouts and smart home uh, holdouts. And uh, are we losing our humanity? I think we are. If you look at how for tens of thousands of years already, humanity has always had like community uh space and where people get together and have more fun especially with this pandemic we're losing our humanity more than ever everybody's communicating through screens only these days especially if you live in cold climates and uh it's been a trend like that for a while where we're not getting together and in groups you you, you have that more in the hot climates like uh, you know hermosa beach california down there or even for venice beach even though the poverty situation is getting out of control over there now but uh what do you think it's we're losing it, I think. I think uh, it's not as simple. I, first, I'd say we never had our humanity to lose in the first place. Hmm. Um, I'd say that um, we're kind of like we are very um, old hardware as our bodies, and we're still not adapted to modern civilization, and especially like as society hopefully gets more better and polite. We still have these kind of uh, long evolution of doing bad things and kind of irrational things. And uh, it's going to take time to catch up there. And I think uh, there's a lot of aspects to that. I think a lot of it is um, is um, uh, a lot of... A lot of poverty as well. I think uh, when people have more money and they're happier, they're more likely to uh, get out more and to socialize more. And um, I was just actually hearing about this with the, there's kind of like this trend with a lot of uh, younger men who um, um, they uh, haven't been doing as well as other groups and even women with uh, the pandemic and uh, with recent times and uh, have more money too and they get the women 
income inequality. Yeah, it's kind of the yeah. number one thing that a lot of women look for for marriage is like a stable income and a yeah, and a good uh, yeah good uh, good job and uh, good uh, income and support a family. And a lot of guys aren't, especially if you're not college educated. Um, but sometimes even if you are, they're student debt and, uh, a lot of guys just don't see that themselves as that, uh, financially stable. So they don't even try in the first place. And, um, uh, they're, and they get depressed and they give up and then they start raging at others on the internet. <laughs> yeah. There's a kind of a vicious spiral and, uh, guys don't, guys need like a, a sense of like, meaning and the like a mission and like they feel like valuable and and that they can provide and they're uh Purpose, and yeah. yeah and that's uh that's kind of missing uh in a lot of uh guys today and uh it's a big problem for marriage rates um for uh health um for the economy for uh yeah. our future really and uh also, people like me know that marriage is a trap, like the legal system. I mean, unless you find the perfect woman, like that's why I'm single by choice. I'm like, I'd rather be single than have a divorce and be trapped and lose half of what I own. And then the legal system screws over men over and over again. And that's a big part of the reason why Robin Williams committed suicide. Cause his because of his happened. wife? Well, no, his divorce happened at the peak of his career when he was making a ton of money. And, you know, all actors as they age, even Bill Murray, my all-time favorite, like, comedic actor, uh, he's been having lesser and lesser roles. And, uh, I mean, the, I, even the greatest icons of all time have lesser roles and they make less money over time. What's so, interesting is that the statistics don't agree with you, though. The statistics well, say guys who are single are tend to die 10 years earlier on average than guys who are married. And oh, they yeah, tend to commit suicide more often, and they tend to uh, have more chronic uh, health problems as well. That's what the statistics oh, I, say. I, 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 I know this is anecdotal. Those, yeah. What I'm saying is this, the statistics on men getting screwed over through the legal system are, are through the roof. So basically, you're going to get screwed in life no matter what. For most people are going to get screwed no matter what your choice is, and you just got to be lucky enough or good-looking enough or talented enough to make it in this world. Otherwise, you're screwed anyway. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you're screwed either either way. But Robin you Williams can be no point. matter what. But I'm just on average. That's kind of what the statistics point to. So I guess that's kind of the easiest way to lean. Of course, everyone's different. Why don't you get rid of this window so we're back on screen large again? We're only tiny little specks on here. We're not. Okay. We're tiny on here. Yeah, uh, we want to be large and in charge. Yeah. <laughs> we're not talking about we're Tesla anymore. Masters right of our own destiny. <laughs> Anyways, back to the Robin Williams thing. Uh, the courts are ordering him to pay the money that he was making at the prime of his career. And he was not making that money anymore. So now he had to like do these desperate roles and he knew it was horrible on his mental health. He was having alcohol alcoholism uh, issues. And uh, he was about to do uh, another Mrs. Doubtfire movie. And uh, Mrs. Doubtfire was, was freaking hilarious, though. He didn't want to do it. Was good. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Like he didn't want to. And he was already doing all these other movies where he was away from home, where he knew his mental health would go way down as he was away from home. But out of financial desperation from the divorce of the Williams. And, and also it came out that he had uh, a I forget what disease it was. It, it might have been Parkinson's. He had uh, a disease that he was diagnosed with and. He just felt like he was trapped in life, and uh, so that was. No matter how much people, no matter how many people loved him, you know, it's sad that uh, he had. Uh, he felt like he was trapped enough to uh, off himself. So. Definitely is sad. Um, it definitely is sad. Um, yeah. So uh, that was a nice little tangent there. Yeah. We. Uh, <laughs> how long has this been going? I can't see the clock, so whatever. All right, here, I'm just going to jump into it. Cause Probably like 50 minutes. or No, it's last because we got started later. All right. Uh, and for the wild, funny uh, aspect of this conversation, I thought I was thinking about this. All right, here's the question. For years, there have been creepy, realistic, uh, full-size sex dolls. Tesla mm. would certainly be... Oh, yeah, at the pleasure bot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He already said he's gonna make it a cat, cat girl robot. Right, yeah, let me get the, the <laughs> Tesla would certainly be at the 
comp- uh, the company at the forefront of making the most sophisticated of sex bots. Vacuum that functions. That they would, and also a quick answer. Uh, I would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna. Oh yeah, my my quick answer. I would never go near one. I don't want to have anything to deal with it. I've seen it on Mad Ventures. It just creeps me out. It feels weird. But uh, clearly, sex sells. Look at the porn site visitor numbers compared to like. Uh, you know, informative web pages and stuff like sex sales, Pornhub is doing like great. So I don't even know what the numbers are, but it's crazy. And so I think if there's money there, they would make these dolls. What do you think? I think porn and sex have been one of the main drivers of new technology. And uh, if you invent something, it's going to be used for porn and sex first. So you get the flashlight, Joe Rogan flashlight in the early days. You promote it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And uh you know, I don't know if uh, they would do that straight from the factory. I'm sure, like, there would be a third party maybe coming in. But I don't know. You can imagine all kinds of things. Could have, like, vacuum functions. So you feel like a suction. You know, you have oral. You can have vaginal. You can have anal. You can have a self-cleaning function would be good because that's one of like the most cleaning, annoying things. Because if, if you do a... And, if you do a, <laughs> yeah, sure. Because if you have the what cleanup <laughs> is one of the most annoying things. So if it could somehow self clean and get rid of, uh, you know, the uh, the it's valuable genetic out. material, then it's uh, it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Still, guys walking down the street. Yeah, maybe we'll think it's a bird. Uh, for real, for real, uh, I don't know. I mean. Um, you can imagine that uh, like a world where a bunch of guys are just with the uh, sex bots and uh, there's even a bigger population problem. But then again, Elon's worried about population collapse and he's worried about declining birth rate. So Ooh. he might not want to put that in because he could that I could see that making that even worse. You were starting to answer when I was asking it. And you said oh. something about, yes, Elon something. Did, did he say he was going to make one, you said? Or what did, what did you say? Yeah, he's uh, mentioned uh, like he wants a future with like cat girls. Um, cat yeah, because that's like a thing in anime, you know, cat girls. Uh, oh, okay. Where people are into cat yeah. girls. I've been, so I've been getting back into it lately, uh, you know, Attack on Titan. Uh, Dororo I'm watching now and that Shiki one was awesome so alright side note all right. yeah the newest season is awesome by the way it's the last so it's the final season oh my god yeah, it's a lot of twists spoil. spoiling yeah. it right now but there's a lot of twists that's a spoiler <laughs> that's a spoil <laughs> there's lots of twists and it's all pretty right, mind blowing else? should we uh, anything else to add on the uh, robot situation we could talk about maybe the future of where they're uh, heading how, like how advanced can you imagine it like I mean, uh, yeah, it's like it's like FSD and bots are kind of connected, but I feel like they can be their whole own thing. Like it could be a whole podcast just about FSD and a whole thing about bots. F- FSD though, that is full self-driving. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're so used to it. I just want to make sure. I know. Clarify that earlier. Um, it's a mouthful. Like, cause how are you gonna say it? Is it robo taxi? Maybe is it get a cl- cross yeah. more easily? But it's not gonna be a robo taxi out of the gate. That's gonna require some regulation type stuff. When they first get it out, it's going to be like a feature and it's going to be uh, like there's these levels and it's going to be where it really is good enough to drive itself, but they still need you to pay attention because of regulation. So that's kind of going to be the first step. Yeah. And it's going to be kind of a gradual thing as well. You know, it would be funny. Use the Tesla bot to sit in the driver's seat and just keep its hands on the wheel. <laughs> I saw this. Like, wouldn't it be funny if for uh, cars that don't have uh, the ability of the self-drive, then you just send a Tesla bot into them. So and suddenly every car really cool. is self-drive. In L.A. have a blow-up dial in one seat or two Tesla bo- uh, bots. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> but then you get into the sex doll problem again, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, no, yeah, but uh, yeah, with Tesla, there's a lot. So like massages. Uh, Imagine a, a robot that could massage you like a professional. It's so expensive for a massage. Body. It's all types of things. So uh, yeah, the the value is in, uh, is immeasurable. It's huge. If you can have a role, you just think about all kinds of jobs. And I mean, and that's just like physical stuff. Like. They're going to not only the bot, but it's going to be thinking stuff, too, that you don't necessarily need a body for. You don't need a body for a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs are kind of thinking jobs. So you can think as this artificial intelligence gets better, it's also going to replace more thinking jobs. And at that point, kind of very little is safe. Calculator jobs, like uh, uh, mathematician jobs, I bet you they'll be better than 
the best mathematicians of all time, kind of like how quantum computing is heading in that direction. Yeah. Imagine quantum computing combining with the Tesla bots of the future. That's ridiculous. Hum humans are going to be like dumb monkeys at that point. They'll be like, I could see how they would turn on us like Terminator style at that point. They would outthink the uh, safety measures put in place in order to make them never attack humans. It, it seems like a possibility at least. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, it's going to be a long time. Like that's the difference between general artificial intelligence and like a more specific intelligences. Like you can have a, a, a software that's smart enough to like be in a factory because that's probably where they're going to use them first. Like it could yeah. be in the factory and um, be replacing some workers on the line. And really, they just have to be able to, you know, find parts, like move them around, get them into the right place, have dexterity, have some feel and maybe yeah. some basic communication, respond to some simple voice commands like follow me stop uh yeah. you know recharge um um replace the toilet paper roll <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no one wants to do that right you know clean the floor <laughs> um paint the fence uh wax the car uh get rid of the toxic chemicals off. <laughs> yeah and uh like yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, and in the house, like massage, that's pretty expensive. So Imagine in hospitals, had... though, like all that, all that toxic uh, needle waste they have and potentially disease-containing... Uh, highly blood, infectious patients. That. People have a, a patient that's oh, highly infectious. Testing. Imagine if the robots could be trained to do COVID testing. They don't even need to wear a mask. Right. right. That would be amazing. Like, there's so many possibilities for the future. Uh, yep. Even future pandemics, they're going to happen eventually. Yeah, and you can send them in, like, even a new disease. You don't even know what it is yet, and uh, they can go right in and start collecting data and, like, analyzing and taking yeah. samples. You don't have to worry yeah. about anyone getting sick. You can send them into quarantine areas. Uh, I how that Mars rover is on the uh, Mars surface going to the riverbeds now in order to take the samples from the soil to see if life ever existed or they could test it by themselves on the spot. You could create custom robots to go and find even the source of the diseases or whatever yep. uh, and they could have uh, networking amongst each other to figure out where the most likely next area is of people who are going to have the uh, covid or the sickness or whatever and yeah very you can actually you stuff. can easily do that with like a like a cell tower type thing and the cell tower could give out like a Wi-Fi signal to these robots, and then yeah. the cell tower could be a, a te um, uplinked to the uh, Starlink satellites from SpaceX, which is under the one of the Elon Musk companies too. So it's kind of it can be all connected that like that, and that's what's going to make them really smart. Is <clears throat> just like the car gets better over time, and they were the first company to do over the air updates. The robot will get smarter over time, and there's going to be software yeah. updates. So uh, it's going to be the improvement. I mean, the first ones versus the ones like five years after that, there's going to be no comparison. I mean, I guess they, they will be the same because they'll keep improving. I right? think uh, my, my good friend, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he'll know if, uh, who he is if he sees this. Uh, he and a bunch of other uh, people uh, online, they're, they're saying that the, ma the next big thing after this pandemic is going to be massive hacking attacks. Imagine if society is like super self, uh, or not self-reliant, but super reliant on all these robots and it's uh, in the satellites. Imagine if China, with their great technology, they're really great on the forefront of technology in that right now. Imagine if China hacks all the uh, robots, uh, that Elon has created or whoever creates after Elon. Imagine if it could be an act of warfare where you hack the robots that yeah. are supposed to be serving the people. That's a real possibility too. And oh yeah, that could be considered the same as idea. like invading uh, with troops if that was the case. I mean, that would be oh, yeah. if they're everywhere and they're hacking, so yeah. I mean, I, I think security is gonna have to be like a huge focus for them uh, on how they develop it. They're going to need uh, – I saw on Twitter someone was like, can you please make sure you put in like a, a hard shutoff switch on it that can't be bypassed? He's like, that's what they messed up in every sci-fi movie is they never had a switch for the robot that you could just that's shut it off. Said? No, that's what someone was responding to, Elon. Oh, okay. Uh, he's been having a lot of tweets on this lately. 
Uh, that would actually be kind of interesting to look at. Twitter. Yeah. I'm laughing at everything lately. I actually. Have own social media company coming up. Uh, I hear too. He announced, I believe. I haven't heard that. Um, but uh, I know that. Um, I'm talking about it. Uh, he mentioned. Um, come on, Twitter. Log me in. You douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> you twit. Where's my last yeah, pass? Is that not on this browser? There's, there's been a lot of, uh, like, uh, I follow a wide variety of people on Twitter, you know, some liberal, some conservative. And one of these conservative guys was saying, uh, his name's Dinesh D'Souza. No, excuse me, I had a little cough. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza, he was talking about how there's so many other ways that Elon could have uh, impacted the world in a, a greater way. And so I, that was the first I heard of it. Then I, I saw another three or four people tweeting about this. Like uh, Elon, I guess, is really either doing it or strongly contemplate uh, contemplating uh, doing it. So uh, doing what exactly? The social media, having his own social media oh. thing where hopefully it'll be censorship free. Hopefully he'll, be, uh, you know, as far as, of course, just straight up hate speech and racism and all that garbage needs to get out as fast as possible. And anti-trans stuff, you know. Okay. Can you uh, click on this? Uh... Get into it. Okay. All I right. got it up there. here. Okay. So you could see it at least. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I should. Stream here. Uh, so, yeah. Keep going. I should set this up. Now, what if I. What are you trying to do? There it is. What if I move it over to my other monitor? Yeah, you could still see it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So these are all his tweets and replies. I'm actually gonna check out the new Halo game because he's. I guess he's playing it and he likes it. He came says out that. Last month. Yeah, but the campaign hasn't come out. I guess the campaign just came out. The PVP has been there, but I've never been interested in the PVP as much. I like the campaign, so I'm gonna check I that just out. Beat, uh, the last games that I ever uh, played lately is uh, Halo games. I got through I think uh, three or four of them on the hardest difficulty. Uh, it's fun playing on the hardest difficulty and for the hail games. Oh yeah. Yep. I mean, it, it, you got to redo, uh, so many, you have to retry the hard parts over and yeah. over again and figure out how to tweak whatever thing is wrong. And got to so get good with your grenade all. throws. Yep. And, uh, also you got to always figure out the timing of where, when you're going to step in one area, when are the enemies going to come out of a door behind you? Stuff like that. You have to. Back yeah, everything. I've been and playing a lot of. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm gonna say. Yeah, no worries. I'm, I was done. Go for it. Uh, I was just gonna say I've been playing a lot of Witcher Three lately, and uh, yeah, I'm on the highest difficulty, but it's not all that hard. You can get uh, killed, but uh, if you have a good build, and I tend to min max everything, then it's kind of hard to die. <laughs> so even though nice. it's on the hardest mode, it's uh, it's not that hard. You don't end up dying that nice. much. It's a beautiful That's game great. though. There's so much to it. All right, so here's one thing. So um, here was a question. This is a guy I follow on YouTube, uh, Dave Lee. Um, uh, he has some people that he responds to on Twitter. And he was saying, I think it's possible that Elon Musk was shown a better than expected super early humanoid robot prototype by his team, perhaps one that can walk and a, be a rough port of FSD. Made it obvious to him that Tesla needs to double down on this. Elon responded to this, says, I'm driving this program personally, as is the case for almost all new programs. So kind of like step up on this, like, no, it's not that my team's working on it and they show me something that impressed me. He's like, I'm heading it. I know everything that's going on with it. So no, he's like, that's not how I roll. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm balls deep in all of these new projects. So, um, and I love it because, um, he knows how to drive these teams and he gets like great results and he really pushes them. And he's, a uh, super smart dude so uh yeah. he's he's driving it personally and he wants to focus on it and he sees that uh this uh this is big and they should uh, uh pivot to that um that actor right there that actress i'm not a fan uh yeah some of his uh i think her name is i don't agree with everything yeah, I'm not like a blind uh, follower of Elon Musk. Like he's God. Like he's uh, has a lot of yeah, things I like about him. But there's some things I don't agree with him on. Um, I don't agree with some of his takes on the the pandemic. Um, I understand that his priority is to um, get all these things done that are really important, and he doesn't want to be slowed down whenever possible. 
Um, yeah. But um, he and has Bernie some. Sanders, when he's bashing, uh, being taxed so much because he's paying, uh, he's paying more taxes than any other human, uh, any other American in uh, USA history. Right. Yeah, they had some things there. Um, you know, um, I yeah, I wish they would get along. I like Bernie and I like Elon. So uh, I I don't know why. I know Bernie and a lot of progressives are against all billionaires just as a matter of principle. But if ever there was yeah. a billionaire that you don't want to go after, yeah. it's the guy who's giving us the solutions to save humanity. That's going to stop climate change. That's going to stop uh, massive uh, uh, problems with civilization. Yeah. That's getting rid of all the polluting vehicles and coal power plants. And, uh, and you know, yeah. these things weren't going to happen if he wasn't around. Like, they didn't want to yeah. do this stuff. Amazon and Walmart and like all these big stores, they shouldn't be getting the huge tax breaks that they are. Elon and the people who are, you know, oh, by the way, here's the thing Elon with Biden the, and Tesla, the biggest breaks, but also the uh, solar tax thing that what was it in California, they were going to start charging people more taxes on the solar panels. The yeah, whole point of the it's solar happening panels. all over the country. Oh, I thought it was. A it California sucks. Election. No, they well, it's worse there. But like California had a good deal where they would get good money for um, uh, the energy they sell back. But like here in Arizona, they used to have that. And then they switched over. It's one of the few states that switched where you don't pay. You don't get paid for the extra energy. And that kills into the, uh, the kind of the economics of getting solar as well. So you yeah. see this in a lot of states, and it's really counterproductive to where we need to go. And it kind of feels like the uh, utilities are being a bit greedy in a way. I understand that um, sure. they have some issues where it could get really expensive if everyone got solar, and um, and they were stuck kind of with just the worst parts without money to to compensate. To me, it, it might not work in an extreme, but. You add batteries to everyone along with solar, that problem goes away. Um, so True. that should uh, that should just be a part of it here. Um, yeah, like when I was selling solar panels, out, uh, I sold them out in California. Locked in right now. The whole point was to have the – you weren't storing them on batteries at that time because the battery technology Too expensive, was expensive, yeah. not that efficient. So it was all about selling them back to the electric grid because the electric grid was so overwhelmed, they do those uh, uh, blackout periods. And uh, so it's, it, and especially during the really uh, bad heat waves out there, they're limiting like water usage and electric. And sometimes during those uh, high fire uh, uh, risk at times during the, uh, what's that called? The, uh, there's a name. Uh, look what a shithead Twitter is. Like once wow. it let me look a little bit, and then now it's, I'm like timed out. It's like log in or sign up, or we won't let you look anymore. And I, if you reload, I, I don't have that problem. Like I've never seen that problem before. Well, because I'm not signed in on this computer. I don't use this computer too much anymore uh, because of the chair situation. What the heck? Again. But I'm not logged in, and I guess my password manager is not installed here for some. Oh, I well. bet it is, but. Yeah. Let's, let's think about more uh, future possibilities with these robots. Uh, okay. Well, been. what do you think about the stock? What do you think about if you were to invest? Do you think uh, you would want to invest in Tesla? Again. Okay. Yeah, then we can get big again. Uh, what uh, if I was going to invest? What'd you say? Um, do you think um, if you were to invest in a stock, um, would you? Do you feel like you could be? persuaded to invest in tesla stock do you think that uh it would yeah, be a good investment sure now the more i look into it now i think i'm gonna have to like uh i have my safe mutual fund going and uh i think i'm gonna put a big chunk of what i do have saved up into it just because it seems inevitable like he's he's smarter than anyone else uh the vision is he's already proven over and over again that his vision is uh, elon's vision is uh beyond anybody else on the planet's vision yeah he like brings things to reality that uh, no one yeah. else has like and he's already proved it with electric cars he's transforming doubters, cars yeah. to electric all these doubters i like that old clip uh from this one guy uh some some guy on fox news or cnn or something like that he was an analyst there were plenty of those 
the number one stock that's garbage is Tesla <laughs> stock. Get rid of Tesla stock right away. So you know why? Away. Because he was shorting it. He was bet he uh, would make money if it went down. That's happens all the time on those what shows. What was that guy's name? Uh, do you remember? I have no idea, but there were tons of short sellers. At one point, Tesla was the most shorted stock on the stock market. That's kind of what started like the GME and AMC stuff. Like they shorted uh, to ridiculous levels, and then a group on Reddit f found out, and they realized that if they drove the price up enough, they were trapped all these short sellers, and yeah, you could move the price up ridiculous. And I was in on that, and I made some money off of that, but I would have made way more if the the kind of the big the big guys didn't step in and said oh we have to stop yeah. this because yeah, suddenly everyone's all the big banks are going to go bankrupt well it's not my fault that's our money they screwed up so yeah. we should get that uh, and they stepped in how come there's not a class action lawsuit where everybody yeah. got screwed by that is that uh, prohibited by law is it what, what the hell is this I it's just know. on a it's on like a case-by-case -case basis right now i've heard of some people getting some money out of some of their brokers and i probably should actually because i definitely did lose money because of that um but it was because it goes up to like a high level it was like uh these kind of like backbone structures that are like part of our capital markets like we're kind of seem to be in on it or like uh it's hard to see exactly how far up it goes so they were like well you know technically it's there's always like a fine print it's like well we could do anything we want if it's uh if it's an emergency like yeah this was an emergency and what are you gonna do <laughs> sorry it reminded me of the south park episode you know the human centipede <laughs> <that> whole... <laughs> yeah south park made the episode called the human centipede <laughs> iPad. What a and great, I, you know, like, yeah, agree, what a great segue. You, would, you, 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 you Oh, because you didn't read that that thing that's like 100 pages and you yeah, always click OK. Like, so, along yeah. Way, I agree. Well, well, here you, now you're forced. Now you're forced to be a human centipede. And then, remember the guy in the front in the South Park episode? He's got the guy in the front is way better off than everyone else in the, yeah, cent, the human guy centipede. Yeah, choices of food. He's like, Cuddlefish? You want the cuddlefish or something yeah. that would be like way like better for the people behind yeah. him? Yeah. And then like the people are like or something that like, gives him like God. diarrhea. Yeah, he's like, oh, not the cuddlefish, no, not the cuddlefish. Or he was saying something like that. And then he goes, yeah. oh, yes, he says cuddlefish, and then he eats the, like the worst thing possible. <laughs> uh, did you see the actual movie that was based on? No, uh, I did. I seen it because uh, I heard because I wanted to check it out. Uh, it's it's like a grossness factor like it's uh, it's kind of like a funny thing it's uh but it's yeah, nice to know yeah it's uh, it's crazy I like horror movies though i like the crazy stuff like the original texas chainsaw massacre from the 1969 or whatever it was that was so much better than the more recent one that was like just straight up violence and like right. watching the, the nails rip off of people as they're just grabbing concrete walls and being driven. Yeah. Like it was too violent in, in yeah. the newer one and not as suspenseful. The, yeah, the like uh, hits you over the head it. with it. It's like it's scarier when it's more it's of a, like a thinking thing. It yeah. yeah, it was so repulsive where I wanted to shut it off right away. But the Not truly scary. One, it was it was terrifying at parts but then it was like a psychological thr thriller at parts too where it's just like you know something horrible is about to happen like when they're sitting at a i'm not going to say too much to, to spoil it oh come on it's an old movie i think you're okay at this point all right, well, well, <laughs> it's only been out for 40 50 years sitting with all these crazy people at this table and you just feel like hell is about to break loose mm -hmm. it's just like a matter of time before she's and then they sit in it like they sit in the tension and they they don't uh, they don't feel the yeah, need to rush, rush and move to something else they let you yeah, kind of that's what makes it so yeah. great the tension uh like psychological thrillers like hitchcock hitchcock was the master of that even though yeah. his, his movies haven't aged as well as like the brand new movies out nowadays with the yeah. young attention span people like uh, yeah people they're like assuming people. everyone has adhd then they you can't yeah. pay attention to one thing for that long they're like oh they'll lose interest if they're just sitting there saying nothing it's like well that's part of the the like, mood and the feeling that makes it move uh, yeah. better like dr strange love you ever see dr strange love yeah of course uh, I mean, like I tried showing it to my brother and like a bunch of uh, like, uh, another friend of ours. I don't know if he wants to be uh, mentioned, but yeah. then they're like, "This is so stupid." You look at the reviews on, on IMDb and stuff, and it's like nine out of ten. Yeah, the greatest films ever made. It's hilarious. It uh, is hilarious. Sellers, 
Oh my god, him as the Nazi is so great. Well, I mean, he did like everything in that movie. How many parts did he play? He was uh he was the guy. Yeah, he was multiple parts. So one was the guy, yeah. He he came in and he was talking to that crazy general who was all about his bodily fluids being pure and he had like erectile dysfunction disorder, he couldn't get up with women, and he's blaming it on like Russians like poisoning the water and like making it not pure. That's why he has to like nuke them. And then he was yeah, the Nazi the And then he was a Nazi. Yeah, he was like he's one of those guys like Operation Paperclip where like we got Nazis from World War Two and brought him over to help uh, us. Doctor Death, Doctor Mengele. That's yeah. Like, you know, all those crazy. I yeah. Think that's who it was. So he'd be like talking about things. He's like, and uh, yes, and we made the bomb, and um, <laughs> and then the next world order uh, will have to have much many more females than males to repopulate the earth. And he's like. Uh, uh, yeah. And he has to like, it's like, it's like he wants to heil automatically, and he's like has to stop yeah, himself. He's trying, he's trying to do the heil Hitler, and he's like yeah. has to try to stop himself. So for, for those of you who are not aware of Operation, uh, or was it Project Paperclip or Operation I forgot, I Paperclip Project. something? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was Project Paperclip, where after World War II, the USA brought in all these genius Nazi uh, scientists, Werner von Braun. There's some uh, of the brightest. Uh, had, he was uh, one of the head uh, rocket scientists for NASA. One of the top Nazi rocket scientists came over, and because uh, they did the rockets first, they, had, they did the V two rockets. Had, exactly, and they had another one in the works before uh, the war ended as well. But uh, before I forget the, my favorite line from uh, Doctor Strange Love, they're in the war room, and then two people are like about to start fighting. He's like, "Right, you can't fight in here. This is the war." Room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is like yeah. the most funny like contradiction that <laughs> you I can't know. fight in the war room. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be polite and professional. Have some respect for the war room. There's no fighting in here. The war no, room. It's also, the war room is all about peace. It was like kind of like that's how I took it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and, but like if you quit on that movie too early, you're like, it's just attention span for older movies. But if you stick with it, it's great. So. Well, just but, like uh, uh, what's uh, the um, the Space Odyssey. Uh, 2000, yeah, 2001, 2001 Space Odyssey. So you yeah, got the first hell. like 20 minutes of the movie. There's no dialogue, yeah, and that's hard for hard for people mile. hard for people to get through nowadays. You know, they're like, oh my god, like what? There's nothing happening, and then they're like, oh, I gotta check my phone. You know, oh, yeah. do I have a, a message? Oh, the Twitter, Facebook. You know, that's the music like was cool though. At, at, during that time, they got that like orchestra, classical like, music. Yeah, yeah, but it's like the high pitched like men vocals like church almost like church like high pitched like suspenseful vocals and they have it sustained so that that maybe help will help some people. oh yeah like oh. i can't even it. Like, it's so oh. <laughs> yeah but like professional like singers doing it like, i'm a professional with like and they have that reverb on there some guy paid a me a dollar one time no <laughs> So, so yeah, ADHD uh, definitely is uh, taken away from uh, a lot of things. I don't know. Short, yeah, film has suffered. Books. A lot Nobody's of ways. reading books anymore. That's I'm guilty of that movie. too. Yeah. Well, it's like the, the mind just runs wild, and that's why, like, I made that last video that I did, like, where it's all about once you bring it back to the now. Like sometimes I'll read a page here and there, and then I realize I drifted and I didn't comprehend it because I was thinking about something else or reading the words on the page. Sure. Then I go back and I read it, and I maintain in the now. Yeah. At that point, course. maybe take a little break, and then you'll like uh, you're not in the zone. But once you get into the zone and you're really like focused in on it, then uh, then it's yeah. great, and really you're you can really imagine yeah, things, and yeah, it's like reading can be really active too because if you really try to picture a scene and imagine what the characters look like when that's read to you yeah. and, it, and it's interesting when you have an audiobook as well because when someone reads it uh to you with a cool voice and do different characters it, it it's a whole other angle to it that i uh i liked um i haven't um i tried uh getting through um one of the new uh the guy who wrote the martian um did you read that book it's a pretty short one no, and it's uh the I martian Yes, yeah, so that was based on a pretty new book, and uh, the, it's a good book. I recommend it. Uh, it's not very long, and it's funny, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot like the movie. And uh, he came out with a newer one after that, 
uh, which is really cool. It has a lot of cool science in it, and he does a good job making the science like uh, approachable and work it in where it's like entertaining. And um, yeah, uh, as an audio book, that was pretty cool. Um, I haven't finished it yet though, um, but uh, I don't know. I'm like I'm into so different parts. There's like I'm into tech so much that like I love like visuals and like oh my tv could do this and this is like 4k mm-hmm. and like yeah, oh you know yeah, and my like hard. sound system and it's like you know i want to enjoy all that stuff too but uh yeah books are still books are still great uh i was gonna say about hardcore history though it's the best like dan carlin in one of the first episodes or whatever he says uh history is so great that it ruined fiction for him and for me, I'm pretty much the same. Like, I have every single Dune book already downloaded on my Kindle. And because I love history so much, like, I can't read, like, a paragraph into Dune. Because then I just feel like I'm wasting my time. And I could be learning more about history. Like, so I'm, me and him are on the same page with that. And uh, Yeah, there's truth in fiction, though, you know. There is, like, but, and sometimes it gets points across even better than history and fiction, I could say, I would say, like, yeah. maybe an avatar. And like history avatar. is kind of just like another fiction because it's the author's interpretation of historical events. And there's a yeah. wide kind of, uh, you know, that it's could true. be very different from one author to another trying to talk about the same historical events. Exactly. That's why the historians, they have to account for everything plus the physical evidence. Yeah, they have to debate. Yeah. There's... And, uh, but the other thing, though, even Dan Carlin says this, and he heard it, I think, from somewhere else. He says that history is a bunch of lies uh, agreed upon. History is a bunch of lies agreed upon. I heard him say and, that. Yeah, I forget which episode it was in, but I've listened to like every episode like three times at least. It's in the Mongol one, like at least four times in the Roman Empire one like four times because I'm always doing my walks so I always like to uh, listen to stuff uh, walking's great clears your mind and gives you time to you know feel healthy and learn at the same time if you got some cool stuff going so yeah for sure I got um I like to go on hikes and um, I just need to I have, don't have that YouTube red but I uh, am able to kind of uh, have like a podcast on my phone and like play it on YouTube and uh, I've done some Star Talk episodes that way and it's weird because well it's funny because I'll I'll be laughing to myself at something they say and I'll be walking by people and I'm just laughing really loud and it's like <laughs> I don't you know. laugh too loud but I, I, yeah. it happens to me where I'm like I look I'm like oh, is somebody looking at me from that window I hope not <laughs> I'm just like cracking up from some something that he says in the or that uh, story I told you last time about the Anabaptists where <laughs> in the, uh, with the cages on the church in uh, Munster, Germany. Like, there were so many crazy parts of that story. I was like, I couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, I find, I find stuff like that funny, too. People should laugh more in, uh, like, public and, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, uh, I heard that the most miserable place to be, like, from Eckhart Tolle, who I featured heavily in my last video, uh, he says that when he went to Russia, he would be like going down the street and he would smile at people and everything. Russians? And, uh, oh, they don't like that. Oh, yeah, because they more trauma <laughs> mm-hmm. than anywhere else. But, uh, so yeah. like. And the anyway, colder like, it is, the less like you're friendly to people. It's like, yeah, ah, probably. I deal with a lot of shit. It's cold. Yep, but uh, they've had to deal with the worst uh, massacres there there have been. Like Napoleon invaded them, and uh, Napoleon took over Moscow. And he thought, oh, as long as I get Moscow, like, the war is over. He was wrong. And Napoleon's troops, uh, it was in the 1800s, uh, early 1800s, I believe it was. So he took over Moscow. All the Russians retreated from Moscow. They didn't want the capital be, to be destroyed, so they all just left it in advance. And so Napoleon was like, like in the main government building and stuff. But, like, they took over that country. They killed so many people. And the Russians themselves, twice, they have this, uh, for, uh, what was it called? The burning strategy. I forget there's a word to it. Uh, scorched earth. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, the scorched earth uh, strategy. So they didn't want to give Napoleon and his troops any. I know military tactics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the same thing happened when Hitler invaded. Be a good general. So, Command and conquer. So I've already done it many times. <laughs> so think about how much trauma there's no people on this planet that has had that level of trauma. the suffering uh, the trauma, trauma 
And you know how to get through that suffering, thanks to your pre previous videos that everyone should take a look at. Yeah. Yes, please. How to deal with suffering, one of the previous uh, videos on this channel. It, if I only those Russian people being slaughtered by Napoleon had access to the internet and YouTube, they would have been learned to accept that they could die yeah, and just to be in the moment. Not no, the no, the ones who see their friends dying, you know, they're like, you know, yeah. this guy's dying, I might die too, you know, eh, you know, also, what can you do? Yeah, all that, like, I mean, all it is, what that video is all about is not adding another layer of, of emotional suffering on top of what is. Mm, right, right. So no matter what the... No, no reason to make it worse, in your own yeah. mind at least. And, and uh, the Russians, after uh, the Germans uh, lost the b uh, Battle of uh, Stalingrad, the Russians were so angry. Remember, the, the estimates are all over the map for how many Russians died. But yeah. a, a good one that I saw was uh, 27. Well, we million. should do a whole podcast on uh, history stuff. Yeah. We could focus on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're just bouncing around on conversations now. We're already done with the other stuff, so we could end this anytime. But I'm I fine. guess I'm so. Feeling. Yeah. And so, I, there was something there was something that led back to uh the tesla bot but uh i didn't talk speak up and it kind of got lost go but it was it. pretty cool no i can't remember what it was because oh. it was like three topics ago now uh, well, it was like was gonna three say, four topics uh, we'll do another one on the future of warfare we'll uh talk about how the tesla bots and drone technology and maybe tank type drone technology could uh, affect combat and Will it eliminate the need for right? I think tanks group? tanks are just for show at this point. Yeah, and World War. That's II, my hot uh, take. Uh, aircraft carriers and uh, airplanes proved to be the most uh, valuable weapons there were in World War Two, and so taking out a aircraft yeah. carrier was like the ultimate goal. And then, so when the U.S. did that to Japan, sure, you, it's like you're taking know. out a base. You know, if you can take out a base where they're launching forces from, that's huge. But now uh, it's a whole different story. But eh, you know we could do that. I'll save that for for another yeah, one. Yeah, save it. All right. Uh, well, should we? Yeah, have any more up? questions about? Uh, so you think you would go for Tesla stock? Because yeah, I think uh, oh, as on. it goes yeah, lower yeah, now. Oh, I mean, as it goes lower now, it's already had a big drop, and uh, so now is not bad time to uh, depend on how much you're going to invest to start averaging into it as it's at a low point. And if it drops more, it becomes really juicy. You you feel a lot better if you get it near a low and then yeah. kind of you, you're up, you know, for a long like period it. of time. It's a, you, it's a lot much better feeling. And then you're, you're, it's easier to hold on to it long term. So that, because there's always going to be ups and downs. And especially if you're just in one stock versus like the S&P 500, where it's 500 companies put together in one, to one stock, basically, yeah, uh, that gets volatility. averaged out. You're going to have more volatility, more ups and downs. And it's the, if you don't hold on to these truly great companies where Tesla is like 20 companies in one, it's, that's yeah. why I call it the only company I ever have to own because they are like, uh, it's, uh, the yeah. Most valuable of all of them by far. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the potential is there. And I, I just, uh, there's uh, good evidence that they've been executing and they're going to be able to execute on things like the Tesla bot. And it's just a massive opportunity that's, uh, and I'm so happy that Elon's focusing on it now. And that's, uh, he sees the uh, high potential for that. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. FSD is already going to make it nuts. I mean, if FSD is actually successful and robo taxis happen, and uh, all these cars are suddenly turned on and start making money like that is going to be huge it's, it's yeah. going to change everything we're going to be able to jump in a car and uh it's going to be super cheap like you never like you why would you take a bus or a train if you get your own autonomous tesla car that shows up and it's just like a couple bucks to go like you know a half hour drive even or something like it's going to be much cheaper than it is right now i like it and they're and, and for them they could charge it could be cheap and they still make tons of money because of software margins like any dollar they get they get to keep 80 percent of that that's huge like the, no one the, you can't do that in the car business it can only happen in the software business so the valuation that right now if that happens you could easily see tesla like 5x or more just from that you can see a five thousand dollars plus um, like people who do models on this stuff, they're like, 
I don't want to share these numbers because they seem ridiculous and I think people laugh me out of the room. But like people do these models where FSD actually works. This is not even including the Tesla bot. They're looking like, wait, so if FSD works and they make this many cars and even being really like conservative on the amount of money they're going to get from this robo taxi FSD thing, it's like, wait, they should be worth a thirty thousand dollars a share by twenty thirty. What? That right now. It's eight hundred something. <laughs> <laughs> These are the kind of numbers they get. Yeah, even conservative. And then you put in Tesla bot. Suddenly Tesla bot works, and it's replacing. Uh, you know, the economy has no bounds, and there's no uh, like limit to uh, to to anything. If you want to do something, you just get Tesla bots. You get a lease, and uh, you get a loan, and Tesla bots are able to do things perfectly and build things out. And uh, uh, and you boom. Your, what's stopping you from owning your own Tesla bot company for a specific industry? There's nothing stopping you, really. Can you you, get, you, you could be one guy, and it could be all Tesla bots under you, and you could do a really complicated thing that would be, like, super difficult to recruit for and hire all the right people. You Instead, you just get a bot, and it's like, I maybe I want this software package where it's, like, it knows how to, like, uh, a mathematician software package. I want the engineering package where it's able to design products. <laughs> like, that's more like the thinking thing where it's down the road, designing stuff. Stuff, but any, any machine needs to be maintained. What, what right. is it going to be like Tin Man from uh, Wizard of Oz? You got to like put oil in its joints or some crap. What, what do you got to do to this thing to maintain it? Maybe recharge its battery every so often. I wonder what it's going to be like. Yeah, I think maintenance is going to be pretty good. Like uh, you see the same thing with electric cars. There's just with electric motors, there's less moving parts. So really, it's just going to be electric motors and like kind of like a computer. You know, it's like. My computer, I don't have many problems with my computers. Have you had a problem with your computer since you bought it? Like anything fail? No, besides the, uh, yeah, no, I've had no, no like uh, hard, hardware failures, except for my fan has been was noisy for a while, but it seems to have worked itself out. But uh, software, I've had problems with the video editing software. Okay, five or six but even before. now, like, yeah, the hardware in our computers, it's so freaking yeah. reliable. It's so long yeah. lasting. I didn't have to replace anything. Crypto miners are running these GPUs 24 seven, like 50 of them together, and they're lasting like years and years. It's ridiculous. So it's, it's parts like that, and electric motors that basically need no maintenance. It's gonna be minimal. It's gonna be, uh, yeah. Are they gonna be needing uh, like a cord plugged into them for power then, as they're working? Maybe. No. No batteries. Downtime? Batteries. So I think so uh, there. It's be downtime then. They it is, but problem. it's gonna be more useful for them to be mobile. Like, think about it. The people, even though yeah, they, they you can have a replaceable battery pack maybe, but I oh, think. That would be awesome. But I think it's the I think design wise they probably won't go for that. But think about it like you have the corded power tools versus the battery power tools. Like everyone gets the yeah. battery power tools now. They don't want a cord. You're so limited. Yeah, so I invented that out of necessity, by the way. Oh yeah, you know that's that? true. Yeah, in Star yeah, Talk, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we got that uh, from yeah, Star Talk. Exactly, uh, yeah, Tyson, <laughs> that's where I learned that from. You heard that too. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, so I, I don't know all the happens. all the retards who are like, well, don't spend money up in space because we got problems down here. Spend the money down here where we need it. Why are you wasting money up there? Well, how about your freaking power tools that you love so much? You know, you wouldn't yeah, have them. Other ones. He, he he went over a bunch of other inventions that we take for granted now. Like yeah, I forget which one. Velcro is one of them. They invented Velcro because of being in space. They needed to secure things. Now we got Velcro. That's like amazing how much weight like a Velcro strap can have. I almost knocked over one of my yeah. speakers not too long ago. Luckily, I They're secured strong. it to a stand with Velcro and uh, like Velcro glued straps. Yeah. Some of them are so hard to rip apart these days. It's crazy. My uncle used to work for a zipper company, and they invented a type of uh, – it was for YKK, they're like the biggest zipper company. They invented a type of Velcro that was super strong, and it was like you could have a, like a strip and it would hold like hundreds of pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's it crazy. Does. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think batteries, uh, you don't want it to plug in because it's so much more useful if they're mobile. Then you could take them anywhere, you know. And and it's like and so 
it's a, that's a good thing about a person. They're so adaptable. You and me, like yeah. you could drop us into all kinds of situations and we're like, we could do useful things. That's like the robots are not, it's going to, it's the, the robots now, it's like it's an arm and it's all stuck in one place. And yeah, and they're super expensive. And, you know, that's what we got right now. When you got a mobile like thing. A, imagine like uh, if the robot was in place of I Love Lucy, the Lucy episode where she's got the chocolates on the conveyor belt and they have it. You, you don't <laughs> wouldn't want eat them. To run out of <laughs> don't have to worry about that. You don't want the robot to uh, run out of charge. So it would be nice to have at least like a charge thing to plug into the back of the robot. And yeah. The robot doesn't have to move anywhere. Right. That it's makes sense. Pass, and that way, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so that would be nice if they have two separate different models uh, sources or sources of energy. Uh, where yeah. As long as you're plugged in, it doesn't drain the battery or you take the battery out and as it's plugged in and it works and it doesn't move. And you can say, robot, do uh, not move. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk like a robot when you say it. Robot, do not move. Robot, <laughs> like, like acknowledge. Yeah, like <laughs> like <laughs> Well, uh, I, love you, I want yeah, you to do. <laughs> Tesla awesome. robot. <laughs> he is awesome. Uh, well, I, it, things are all thing. A lot of things are like that. It's like your phone, right? It's like uh, you can use it while it's plugged in as well. It will be like that because you're gonna. Yeah, they're gonna have to yeah, plug yeah. in for charging. So of course, like they'll still work if you plug them in, and it'll just recharge the battery, and they'll be working at the same time type of deal. Yep. 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 So. All right. Well, so, I don't know if I have anything else to talk about, I know you wanted to keep it yeah. shorter. You got anything else to talk about, or are we wrapping this up? Well, I don't know. Valuation is fun. So if you throw out a number like forty, thirty thousand dollars a share in twenty thirty, based on FSD working, suddenly, what if Tesla bots are working? What can Tesla be uh, stock be worth by twenty thirty? Is it you know? Double, triple, ten times, three hundred thousand dollars a share. On the planet, the most—it's pretty much the most important company on the planet. It seems like, because like they're gonna transcend. And it, it, also, maybe uh, you should look into that social media thing with uh, Elon. If he starts his own social media company too, on top of it, making money like that, I don't even know what it would be called or which uh, company it would be, or maybe a brand new company, whatever it would be. Probably yeah. would be, I would imagine. I don't like oh. echo chambers though. I hope it wouldn't turn into something like that if he does it. Uh, yeah, hopefully you know, it would, would be, be open. For everybody. Yeah. Yeah, just gotta keep out the obvious hate. That's all. Yeah, but I think yeah, uh, yeah now is not a bad. The stock is beat up. It's definitely beat up. It's like twenty six percent down from all time highs. It could go lower. Yeah, it could always go lower, but it can't go to zero at this point that the car business is making too much money it's already baked in a lot of they're going to be making a lot of cash so even if we go into recession and a lot of things fall apart it can only go so low. it's going to be backstopped by like just the assets that it owns you know it owns a lot of assets so i don't see it going lower than 500 would be almost impossible even if we're in like a great depression depression type of situation which great depeche mode yeah depeche mode type of situation <laughs> oh that was awesome but uh, uh oh man i forgot the great depeche mode messed me up <laughs> i kind of want to hear a depeche mode song right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah good stuff but uh all right yeah i think i'm uh you've convinced okay. me at least uh, all the way uh, also by the way uh, like all the uh, podcasts like this is not financial advice right you have to do your own due, due, due diligence yeah i can't yeah, guarantee so anything it's just my thoughts and i'm not a financial advisor and exactly. nothing's guaranteed so, but you know i i firmly firmly believe it i'm uh, putting my money where my mouth is and i don't i don't see like any place you could park it that's as sure a thing as tesla long term like and seeing this focus on the bots just like renewed that for me just made that stronger yeah, that you gotta do uh get them get them back on the joe rogan podcast and make them smoke a fat blunt with uh joe rogan again and so the price drops even bad. more yeah and so you can I'll buy it cheap i'll get it on that day <laughs> It went down like over ten percent when he smoked uh, weed on uh, Joe Rogan, even though it's legal. Like, yeah, what? I kind of uh, I had a uh, in the back of my mind. I thought maybe they also microdosed magic mushrooms before they did that podcast because when they first started that podcast, like. Uh, Joe was telling Elon, he was like, and mushrooms, like everyone should do them. They're like all kinds. And he was like, uh -huh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, mushrooms. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, there was some guests on uh, Joe Rogan that have. Uh, He's definitely done it on mushrooms. He's done the well, show on they, mushrooms before. Were, I forget which guest it was, but uh, there was one or two that they were talking about DMT, and then they were kind of hinting that Joe Rogan had the connection for the DMT. And of course, he's always talking about DMT. Yeah, he's but, done it many like, times. He said. <laughs> oh yeah, like. Uh, uh, oh, speaking of that, uh, Michaela Peterson talked about this on I think uh, the Tim Pool podcast. There was this guy who did DMT like many, many hundreds of times, and he claimed to have had a relationship with an alien. Uh, female, like, <laughs> yeah, if you do DMT hundreds video. of times, I think you'll get there. Well, yeah. There's <laughs> a, a, a video on this, uh, it's from Comedy Central that highlights it, and they have it, uh, they have it nice and animated and cool about <laughs> crazy trip stories or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, if you put it in on Google, anybody who's watching this, just say the guy who did DMT and had an, a relationship with an alien, and it's a, you hear it right from his mouth uh, the entire story. It's it's pretty wild stuff. So yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, I could keep going, but uh, yeah, we could. We're going long, yeah, so we can do another shorter, time. So. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out my channel, of course. Subscribe to Dead Man Dreams channel, of course. Check out. My most important video I've made is definitely I've gotten better at editing as well, and it shows everybody. Uh, all the people who've given me feedback have said it's way better. The uh, reduction of suffering is my uh, most important video. Definitely check that out. Share it with anybody who's suffering. I hope it uh, really helps people uh, to avoid you know bad decisions, doing hard drugs, doing suicides, whatever. Like there's I've lost a lot of friends, and I found uh, strength to despite having gone through far more than anybody I know, especially, you know, with ankylosing spondylitis, you know, so please check that out. Check out my uh, Nature of Reality one as well. The editing isn't as sharp, I admit, because it was I was learning the software and it was my first video since 2007, but I'm just getting better and better from here, so yeah, please check that out and uh, hit me up on Facebook, on my Facebook page. I, I respond to most messages still, so all right, and uh, Momentum Mori, remember you shall die. And Marco, go for your uh, outro. Tell them about your channel. Yeah, so uh, I um, I want to make more videos about Tesla. I'm uh, very focused on it right now. I would be happy just making videos. There's people who make videos just about Tesla because there's so much news. There's so much going on with the company. It helps investors um, feel more comfortable knowing what's going on with it, especially if you focus on it exclusively. And it's just like a feel good kind of uh, knowing that they're making progress, that the people work for the company, um, they feel like they have a mission, that they're really improving things. And uh, you can kind of like join on that ride by like following along and seeing what they're doing and following the news and you learn about the new tech and you get a kind of a sense of where we're going because technology is going to keep changing the way we live and um, changing our society. So. Uh, if you follow one of the companies that is um, on the cutting edge of new technologies and they're already imagining these new things that are coming out years in the future, um, you're going to see that coming sooner than other people. That can have, um, uh, beyond simple curiosity, that can have advantages for you financially or, uh, I don't know, emotionally. Um, and uh, it's a good way to be uh, clued in. and. Um, and you learn new things all the time. I mean, just uh, uh, new things about science, physics, what's possible, what's not. I've seen people, they start channels where they focus just on battery technology. There's a guy who didn't have nothing to do with batteries before, and all he does is talk about battery chemistry now and the types of batteries and like uh, how they work. And he taught himself, and he's teaching other people, and people love it. It's great. I mean, the gigacasting technology, manufacturing is a really underappreciated um, field, uh, especially since a lot of ma manufacturing has gone overseas and it should be more here. Um, so that's a great uh, topic. That's a great field. Um, is that what you're focusing on? Um, no. Um, I, uh, I don't know. Just... Uh, general things i don't know yet uh i'm thinking of either starting a new channel or just changing my channel name possibly again but uh, i do want to just focus on that and um 
And if I could come out with a video every day about kind of just what's going on with the latest uh, with Tesla, um, and yeah, well. if that was uh, would be helpful and informative to people, I would be uh, I could feel pretty happy about that. I could be pretty you satisfied that doing that. I, I have a channel already that I uh, called Thoughts on Tesla that I kind of um, I saved the name. So it's like an empty channel. And um, uh, I don't know. I go for the alliteration a lot of times. At least I'm like, well, that's something for a name. It's yeah, like. Gonna, if it's catchy, it could be shared easier. Yeah. Between the, my name for this channel. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I might use that. You know, my channel is like on a bunch of different topics. So it's. Uh, uh i started with computer reviews and like stuff and i recently did like a big thing where i moved uh, my computer from kind of one to another with a different case and i didn't even film it i was like uh i was like it's hard enough to do that i don't want to film it and do all that stuff too i was already in pain for like multiple days afterwards because all the <laughs> the awkward like kind of positions and all that stuff so we were I, wrapping this up I went yeah a oh, long wrap yeah. up everyone forgot about your outro at this point i've been taking forever <laughs> so uh yeah so um that's about it. So I don't know exactly what I want to plug at this point, but uh, if it's I put this on my channel, then you'll see it here on my channel. So just look at more of that or expect more Tesla stuff to come. <laughs> All right, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, love everyone. Uh, you know, be kind to others, be kind to yourself, and uh, take it easy, everyone. Good catching up with you, Brian, and uh, you too, have a good week.